and yet we're supposed to think that um, we're supposed to buy this line that it was Russia that started the fight, and that was an overt lie from the start. I, I was disappointed that the uh, Washington think tanks did not speak out strongly against the, the uh, BS on the uh, on Russia at that point. I'm, I'm, the uh, Russian government's bad news at this point is, is becoming more authoritarian as time goes on, but this is a fight that was started by Georgia. And why in Hayes, Bush would be sending U.S. ships in that area like he's trying to provoke the Russians, it's insane. Yeah? Yeah, I just want to say thanks for speaking. It's, uh, it's good we can still legally meet to question the government and, and uh, talk about ideas, because that's, that's the one thing that, you know, tyrannical dictators try to stand out. Um, but my question is a little bit unrelated. I heard you were uh, writing with, uh, something with Barr, and kind of interested in, to hear the uh, status of that. Yeah, I, I, I did some work for the Bob Barr campaign. Uh, Bob Barr had a, has, uh, has had a great record on the Second Amendment and on the Fourth Amendment. When he was in Congress, he was one of the best people on that. Uh, in some ways, the very best. He showed great courage and wake and other things. Um, I was, uh, Barr did a book, uh, the uh, Barr campaign put out a book called Lessons in Liberty. And uh, his acknowledgments, I think, mentioned that uh, I'd done some, um, some of the research and draftsmanship for that. So, and uh, Hopefully the bar campaign will settle accounts on that soon. So, <laughs> other questions? Yeah. Uh, just one more question. Um, one thing I noticed is uh, you were mentioning think tanks, and this is a perfect uh, point about them. Is this, it seems the think tanks are the ones pushing for the limiting of freedoms in the name of uh, national security, and also in you know pushing for the war in Iran. Well, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, the, uh, there was a, a question about the think tanks uh, in Washington, and they, some of them have been very pro-war, and uh, a question about my opinion on Bill Kristol, who's with AEI and Weekly Standard, uh, and a uh, question of, uh, of why he suddenly endorsed the peace candidate, Barack Obama. Um, good old Bill Kristol. <laughs> you know... It is interesting to see how things are scored in Washington. This is someone, if you go back and see his columns from 2001, 2002, 2003, almost everything he said about Iraq proved to be wrong. You know, he was just completely wrong on so many things, and he's been wrong on a lot of other things. He's had a lot of disdain for any civil liberties. And uh, I guess that's why, I guess last year, the New York Times made him, made him an op-ed columnist. Um, and I'm serious on that, you know, uh, there, there, was, uh, uh, there were a lot of good jokes at that point about how wrong does a conservative have to be before he's, he becomes a New York Times columnist. Uh, and um, if you look at his stuff during the campaign, he was rapidly uh, pro-McCain. Uh, uh, he was one of the biggest, uh, biggest apologists for the moose hunter. Uh, and. Uh, Yet, at the very end, he suddenly started saying some nice things about Obama. And basically, it's just, you know, it's just a question of who's going to win. I mean, th there were some other neoconservatives who all of a sudden said nice things about Obama in the last week or two of the campaign. You know, that's not really a good, sincere endorsement. You know, I mean, if, if, if John McCain is going up in, 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 in a, in a uh, mushroom cloud because of all screw-ups and because of his vice presidential pick and things like that, and, th and then you suddenly say, well, I suddenly realized that the other candidate has, a, has an honest vision. You know, this is Washington. This is crap. <laughs> so, other questions? Uh, yeah. If, it, if it's so obvious that the uh, bailout wasn't going to work, why, uh, why did so many economists support it? Like uh, Kremlin or Stiglitz or Volcker? Um, the, uh, the question is, if it was obvious that the bailout was not going to work, 
why did so many columnists support like uh, 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 so many economists? I'm sorry. Um, it's going to work out good for the economist, and I'm serious on that. I mean, I was I, I was looking at the, some different topics for the talk tonight, and you know, it, it's it's fascinating how how economists have been co-opted at times in the past. I think one of the, one, one of my favorite examples of that is agriculture economists and the notion of parity. You have all these ag, ag econ experts from the 1920s onwards that justified federal intervention in the agriculture markets because farmers didn't have, uh, didn't have parity prices. Well, what is parity? Parity is simply a ratio of uh, crop prices to industrial prices based on the 1910 to 1914 era. Why would you have a bunch of economists using this kind of completely bogus standard to measure prices or standards. Well, it made for a lot of jobs for agricultural economists. Almost all of them got jobs in, in the government or in the state universities, uh, things like that. As far as, um, as far as why many of the liberal economists endorse the uh, bailout, um, there are a lot of economists who simply have faith in government. And it doesn't matter how often government fails. I mean, government, government as, an, as an idea is still worthy of trust and faith. Uh, George Stiegler had some wonderful writing about that back in the early 1980s, 1970s, about he was, he was talking about how, how, the, how economists as a class would make all these judgments when they had almost no evidence. And, and I think it's similar to the, uh, the economists endorsing the bailout. Uh, I mean, some of the same... Economists might have 30 years ago thought that the uh, mixed economy model of Hungary or Yugoslavia was a success. People like John Kenneth Galbraith probably did, though he's not in favor of the bailout because he's dead. Um, but it's, I mean, there is a long history of, 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 of respected economists being in favor of policies that had no empirical basis whatsoever. So, yeah. Um, both are very dangerous. Uh, uh, the question is, what is more dangerous, the expansion of executive branch power or the expansion of Congress's power? Congress had a chance to set standards and to say, this is how the law will work. These are, uh, these are the things, that this is, the, 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 this is going to be the test to see whether the bailout actually works and how it's followed. Congress didn't want to didn't do that. Congress wanted to keep its hands clean. Congress is going to be pissing and moaning, uh, rightfully so, about how the bailout's done. But they uh, basically abdicated. Um, as far as having a direct impact on American citizens, there's probably more danger from the executive branch because that, uh, you know, that's where the laws are enforced. That's where the laws are carried out. But Congress compounds that by writing laws that, uh, you know, that trample the Constitution and basically, uh, basically let the executive branch does whatever the damn well uh, does whatever it damn well pleases, as long as it claims to be serving the public. Yes? What would you do with the three days auto copies? Um, it's, probably, it's probably too late to sell them short. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, there was a question. The, the question is, what would I do with the three big auto companies? Um, you know, this is why we have markets. We have markets, and, part, and an important part of the market is the bankruptcy provision. And you have uh, companies... General Motors especially, that has been so uh, laggardly and so complacent and hasn't bothered to make cars that people really had a passion for unless they were over 80 years old. Um, you know, this is, I mean, they're, you know, uh, it, it's not a recent thing that the big three have had troubles. I mean, this is going back to the late 1970s. And a large part of their trouble has been is that the Japanese and some other countries make cars that are more reliable. And I don't know how a federal bailout is going to change that. A Chrysler was bailed out in 1979, 1980, and um, it certainly didn't make the K car a good car. <laughs>